more and more black creators are not reviewing James Charles makeup. So let's talk about it. So you have a popular black creator by the name of Goloria and she came out with this video where she's reviewing the YSL liquid blushes. Now these blushes have started so much controversy because of her video. Here we go, roll it. <coughs> A blush. A blush. <coughs> A blush. A blush. A blush. I'm scared. Here's a zoom in. They all have a white base. None of these are gonna work on skin as dark as mine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take it back to the lab. Now, the sad thing is, is that YSL is owned by L'Oreal Paris. Now, L'Oreal Paris is a billion dollar brand that has the resources to create an amazing shade line. Let's talk about the controversy around this blush and why it's really important we have these conversations in the beauty industry, especially when it comes to inclusion in the colors that are offered. Let's look at the ingredient deck for this blush. So you see here, the first ingredient is obviously water. Dimethicone is a silicone. When you start going down a little bit, you see here it has titanium dioxide and mica. Those look like this and they're used in almost all color cosmetics that exist. They are very white and very opaque in appearance. So pretty much all color cosmetics are technically have a white base. Do you see this ingredient right here, iron oxides? That's a pigment, it is in this blush. And this one specifically, 77491, that iron oxide looks like this. It's actually a dark red brown pigment. So there's no reason why in a formula, you can't just increase the pigment load to help mask the white from the titanium dioxide and the mica that's in the formula. It is not hard to do. And I know I may get heat for this, but content creators shouldn't be getting run off of the internet because they're speaking their truth about this being false advertising and this not working for them when it's a super easy fix add more pigments to the formula and lastly why I'm being blunt people who look like me shouldn't be complaining or saying well just go find something that works for you it's very easy for us in our skin tone to have something that is very pigmented works still on us with a light hand but you can't take a super light color like this and just apply more and it's going to show up on skin it's not it's easier to find things that work for people that look like me versus someone that looks like this so they should rightfully speak out why is this still happening in 2024 for different people of colors whether you are fair to rich but also they have so much at their hands to give it pigmentation for different types of skin tones and they just dropped the ball. Well then, in her video, in the comment section below, people were asking her if she was going to review James Charles painted blushes. Now, I have the receipt because you guys know James Charles has been working so hard on these blushes for what, almost, it seems like years, but it's been like months and months and months. Well, they asked her, will you review James Charles blushes? And she said, no. Like basically like a, like a hell no. And I was thinking about this and I was like, this is really shady. Let's talk about it. But also she had the same sentiment toward Jeffree Star when they asked her if she was gonna review Jeffree Star's makeup and she said, never. Like she's not gonna review Jeffree Star's makeup at all. And this is one of those things where it's either you can take somebody who's problematic and separate the makeup from the person, kind of like those music artists like like a Michael Jackson or R. Kelly, like I like the music, but I don't like the person. Do I still listen to the music or do I not? I don't like the person. Can you separate the person from the art? And that's up to you to decide. Gloria said no, and she's not reviewing any of their stuff. Well, then I started to see more and more videos pop up about this blush, right? And I was thinking to myself, she's right. Everything she said in that video was 100% correct. They have the, the money and the resources to make this happen, so I don't know why they're not. Well, then Manny Amy Way posted a video talking about it, but in my opinion, I think that Manny Amy Way was just like clout riding or clout chasing, whatever, after her name because Gloria is very, very popular right now. She's one of, my opinion, one of the top black influencers on TikTok that's reviewing makeup and very outspoken. And because of that, I think that Manny Amyway kind of like jumped on it. Now, <laughs> a blush. Who is this even made for? 
YSL just dropped these new Make Me Blush liquid blushes, and this is in the shade 69, and it's a very light lavender. So as you saw in Gloria's video, by the way, she's absolutely incredible. I'm a huge fan of her content. I just, I love her dearly. Going on so white, and I think that all of the blushes that they launched have a white base to them. So I'm literally looking at it and I'm like, who would that even work for this color? So I'm curious to try it out myself to see if it would even work on me, this lavender blush. When I first saw this blush, I was like, oh, I'm gonna mix it in with my concealer to brighten it. But then I really thought, and I'm like, babe, this is blush. Like, why would I be mixing this in with my concealer? That's crazy. So let's see if this is gonna work on me because I really don't think it's going to. It's so white. Oh dear. Oh dear. And let me tell you something, I'm alabaster. Nude, light, fair, plus. Clean brush. Oh no. Mm-mm. What the fuck was that? I genuinely do not know who could wear this and it would look good on. I'm not even kidding. Put it underneath the eyes and add some concealer to it. And we're gonna see if this will brighten it up. It just made my under eye brighter. So, who is this meant for? Who is this meant for as a blush? If YSL wants to go this light with the blush, hey, that's their prerogative, but especially as a bigger brand, let's make sure that we're hitting multiple skin tones when it comes to blushes and bronzers and not just foundations, concealers, because uh, the range with what I saw in Gloria was lacking fiercely. So we're gonna have to get it together. <laughs> we're gonna have to get it together, Diva. Look at this. The amount of comments I had tagging her and this video, stunning. Stunning! The YSL Lavender Blush Saga continues. My comments in my video talking about this are an absolute shit show mess. So in my video, I had said, who would this work for? And a lot of people tagged Oceane in my video, who is absolutely stunning, by the way. Thank you for tagging her. I followed her. I think she's an absolutely beautiful creator, like truly stunning inside and out. She has albinism, which means she has no pigment in her skin. So the lavender actually did show up on her skin. So the comments I think is where people are getting a little confused and I thought I would talk about this. People in my comments were talking about how diversity is supposed to go both ways and it's supposed to apply to the lightest of complexions as well. And I understand the sentiment, I do. However, that's not what this is about. In my video originally, I said, if YFL wants to make a shade this light, that is their prerogative but I think that they need to create more inclusive shades as well. That would work on deeper complexions. So let me just say this, if you are light or fair, all of these YSL shades are going to work on you, every single one. You might not like the color, you might have to dial back the amount that you put on because it might be too pigmented on your skin, but the color is going to show true to color because you are fair. That is not the case if you have a deep, dark complexion. Let me explain it in super simple terms. If you get a white piece of paper and a black piece of paper and you get a pink marker, you draw a line on that white piece of paper, it's gonna show up pink, true to color, because white reflects color and reflects light. You get that same marker and you draw on that black piece of paper, you're barely gonna see even a hint of pink because black absorbs color and absorbs light. The same exact thing applies to your skin tone. If you are white, anything that you put on your whiter skin is going to reflect the true color because it is white. White is always bouncing back color. If you have a lot of melanin and depth to your skin, the color will be absorbed. You put a white base blush on deeper complexions, it's going to look gray because white plus black equals gray. The color is being absorbed, so it's going to give you a gray cast, and that is what people refer to as something being ashy. So the argument that inclusion goes both ways when it comes to these blushes is null and void because if you are fair, all of them are gonna work on you. And if you're deep, they're not all gonna work on you. I think it's really important to continue to have these conversations because I don't think that a lot of people realize that that is what the case is. Because I am light, all these shades, every single one of them is gonna show up true to color on me because my skin is reflecting the color in these blushes. I might not love every color, but most of them would work on me. And I think that's the part that people aren't understanding. When Gloria swatches all six of them on her skin and they all look ashy and gray, that doesn't mean it's inclusive. That's why when a brand like YSL launches six blushes and not one of them work on a deep complexion, it's not acceptable, especially with the size of the brand and the money that's behind YSL Beauty. It's a humongous brand with human Mung is backing. There's really no excuse when you're that size. And on top of that, marketing it for everyone. I hope this makes sense. I try to explain it the best that I could. Um, and trying to get all my thoughts, you know, 
in video form. This is why the inclusion conversation is so important um, because most things are catered for lighter complexion. We can have this conversation in a respectful way. We can, okay? We can be respectful. You don't need to be crazy in the comments. My comment section got crazy as hell. It doesn't need to be like that. We can be respectful and just have open conversation. So yeah, I hope that helps a little bit uh, when it comes to this conversation. She called out Patrick Starr before and she did not like Patrick Starr's shade range. She even got Patrick Starr to confess that Patrick Starr fired his whole entire team for not having inclusive shade ranges. So here's what her new video is about with Patrick Starr and here's what Patrick Starr had to say. Here we go, roll it. Let's talk about redemption. Yeah. This is the darkest shade of the brand new Patrick Star One Size Turn Up the Base Full Beats Foundation. This is the darkest shade. Patrick Star, come to the front. A few months ago, I reviewed the darkest shade of the One Size Foundation and it was way too light. Hmm. Patrick, Patrick, let me talk to you. You see skin? Skin, you see what happens when you use your voice? This is a brand founder who cares. This is a brand founder who cares about inclusion. Patrick, you will always be famous. One size will always have a fan in me. This is how you do a complexion launch. This is how you do a foundation launch, period. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, grab a snack and come on back. So all that to say is I really like Gloria and her approach to things. Whether or whether you feel like she is in the wrong or the right, she's, she's allowed to think how she thinks. But because of that, she's gotten so much backlash and wanted to step away off social media. And she posted this long, long, long video about why she's stepping away from social media because I guess a lot of it got to her. And a lot of people are looking for her for honest reviews, but sometimes she's not even reviewing makeup that people want because she doesn't like the person and people are all upset. The thing is, she's not the only person reviewing makeup. There are a lot of other people out there you can turn to. So when she does something that you don't like, there's somebody out there that's doing it. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, if you're not gonna do this for me, someone else will type vibe. Now, Jeffree Star even reviewed the YSL blushes and he did not like them at all. This is a blush. <clears throat> not for me though. Here are the YSL Make Me Blush Liquid Blushes. Oh, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another makeup review. How are ya? Now, what is on the chopping block today? It's the battle of the hot pink blushes. Yes, today it's Miss Kelly Ray, a brand that is from the former owner and creator of Urban Decay. She has a brand new brand and it's in Sephora and it's gonna be versus the new YSL liquid blush. Let's get started. Okay, now the Cali Ray Blurry Blush retails for $25. It's supposed to be like a cloud on your cheeks and the formula is supposed to be blurring. It looks really cute. I can't wait to use it. YSL, $39. Yes, I'm not kidding. $39 for the Make Me Blush Liquid Blush. Whew, so let's just try this. Now, I do have wet foundation on my skin. Of course, we're gonna apply the cream blush to foundation, and I'm wearing that Shiseido Revitalescent Skin Glow. Okay, $25, Cali Ray. Here's the packaging. It looks really cute. Ooh, and when you open it up, you guys, I love this doe foot. Ooh, and you know I love it when it's big. So in case a little goes a long way, let's just do that. See what happens. We're gonna take the iconic Jaclyn Hill um, 17 brush. I love this for creams. And let's just see what it's giving. Oh, okay. Now, I instantly see a little bit of blurring, which I love when a blush is giving me that moment. It dries quick, bitch. That, that drew, okay, that dried real quick, y'all. Let's do a little bit more. This is giving Barbie, it's giving, hi, how are ya? Remember, there's no concealer and it's not set yet. I love how pigmented it is. Now, Miss $39 YSL. I was recently just scrolling and I guess the shade range on this line is absolutely atrocious. So YSL, get it the fuck together. Okay, for the formula, let's just apply right there. Oh my God. Okay, it does feel a little bit more serum-like and watery than the other side. Is this pigmented? Let's see. Okay, what is it giving? Oh, okay, what? Oh, <laughs> God. Literally, it's like, 
pussy pink. Oh my God, this is drag queen <laughs> fantasy right here. We're gonna take a little bit of our Dior concealer and dim this down a little bit. And let's see which one is superior. Okay, the concealer is blended out. Here's the Cali Ray side. Ooh, and here's Miss YSL. What's up? It's a little blotchy. I'm gonna keep it really real as always. It's a little blotchy. Over here, it definitely had that blurring effect like it said, and I think it just looks a little more soft. Okay, it's only fair that we set the face and see which side is superior. So we're gonna go in with the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Powder. If you haven't tried pink cashmere, you're sleeping on it. Here we go, I think it's only fair to set the face, and that's gonna see what is happening. And the face is officially set. Now the Cali Ray side, I love how it stayed through. A lot of the times when you set, the pigment does not come through anymore. It looks pretty, it definitely looks blurred, and it feels really nice. Now Miss YSL, it's a little blotchy. It didn't sit right, and I know you may be like, well, you did apply a lot. The concealer always fixes it with any other brand. I've never had any issues. It's giving blotchy the house. Okay, I've been wearing it for a little bit longer just to see what happens. I popped on a new little lip. Hi, Lollipop Killer Velour Liquid Lipstick. A little bit of this Gaga Amazing Highlighter um, just to give it something. And yes, the highlighter made the blush look way prettier, but let's get to the final results. You have Miss Cali Ray Cosmetics with $25, and you have Miss YSL Beauty with $39. I think we have a clear winner here, Miss Cali Ray! love the packaging. It's cute. It's stunning. It's something new on the market. I love this big doe foot. Now the formula is blurring. Anything that has a blur in it, I want it now. YSL, your shade range absolutely sucks and you need to start catering to anyone with a deeper skin tone. Callie Ray Blurry Blush is Jeffree Star approved. Anyways, let me know what you think about all that drama in the comments down below. This is Rich Lux with the hottest layer news and gossip on YouTube. Mwah.